Welcome everybody uh, to this webinar, which is called Stepping Up Open Science. Uh, few housekeeping rules. Uh, sorry. This uh, uh, webinar is recorded. The question and answer will be recorded, but not disseminated. For the duration of uh, uh, the webinar, please uh, keep your microphone and cameras off during the presentation. Make sure uh, you add your name and uh, your affiliation and briefly introduce yourself uh, via chat or uh, um, during uh, the uh, questions. And feel free to unmute and turn on the camera in the question and answer session. So thank you. And uh, now we will start. So uh, I would like to introduce uh, um, Natalia Manola, the CEO of OpenAir, and I am the Outreach and Engagement Officer. So Natalia, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Julia, and uh, a warm welcome to everyone. And um, we appreciate you being here and taking the time to listen to what we're doing, uh, because I think, you know, uh, oops, it's changing back and forth, Julia. Uh, uh, because uh, what, what we are doing is, is, is to us very important. We will try today to give a brief overview of the services that we have been um, developing and operating for the past 10 years and uh, give you a glimpse on, on the way forward, on, on the future. And in all that, uh, we would like to, you know, to thank you as collaborators, not just as users, because um, from the beginning, OpenAI has been a participatory infrastructure, and we would really like to extend and value your, your input. So I, I will start with a brief introduction, and I think, you know, uh, I will not go very uh, strongly over it, is about open science. So what we need to realize is that now open science goes beyond open access to publications, and we know that institutions um, uh, need to have new functionals and organizational schemes to embrace it, but not just to embrace for the sake of embracing it, but just to make it work for them. And this is, this is crucial and this is what we need to, to, to have in mind. So it's collaboration and interdisciplinarity, some of the things that we are seeking. So what are the objectives of every institution or of each institution? Uh, but at the end is, you know, we need to make it ours. Uh, next slide, Julia. So uh, just to give you all a brief overview, things have started in Europe from 2003 and uh, the European Commission have started to implement things in 2007. I will not go over this in detail because this is, you know, uh, we will share the slides so you can, you can see it. But now we are at the point here after 2021, uh, when the Horizon Europe start, started, it has open science all over the place. So that means is that um, researchers and um, their affiliated institutions have to step up and, and uh, help them implement it and help them uh, implement it in a very efficient uh, way. But also now we are in the process of where open science enters um, really enters the research ecosystem, especially with a coalition for advancing research assessment. So how can open science be part of it? Uh, next slide, Julia. So open science, just, you know, just to revisit some facts and truths before, before we go into open air. So as, as, as you've seen, open science is here to stay because it's, it's the new way of doing science. Then open science is multifaceted, you know, uh, even in open air that we have been uh, operating uh, services for 10 years, sometimes things are complex, they are interconnected, and it's, a, it's, a, it's many facets that we have to tackle it. Then what is true is that open science costs, it doesn't come for free, you know, there is free access, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's not um, uh, uh, without costs. And what we need to realize is that we need to have, from the institutional point of view, long-term investments. Not huge investments, but continuous and you know, constant investments over time. Why does the institution for open air and for us is, 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 is crucial? Uh, why? Because it's, it's the one that is supporting researchers at where research takes place. And this is very, very um, important. 
And then what we see and what you will see throughout the presentation and the services is that open science requires a holistic approach. You can't have a tool or a service just, you know, to do something without continuing on it. So we need to the tools, the incentives, the assessments to become a win-win for all. And uh, then um, what we need to realize is that, of course, researchers and the holy grail of putting researchers and then users in the center is there. But we need to think also in institutions. And as I said before, with the functional and organizational changes that other actors like librarians, like research managers, uh, vice rectors, uh, teams need to be involved. And this is, this is very, uh, this is very uh, important. Uh, next slide. Now, uh, what we need to think also about is that uh, open science, why is it important? Because you know, everything is digital, everything is big, everything is connected. And as you will see now in, in, in the slide, is that we have this research life cycle from planning to discovering, processing, publishing, archiving, and assessing, and everything is connected. So we plan in order to be able to discover, in order to, to be able to share how we publish, and in order to be assessed. Uh, we discover previous results, and then we use in our planning, and we use in our processing to derive new data. So everything now is interconnecting, and this is, you know, this is the difficulty of it, but also the magic of it. Uh, next slide. Now, what, what are we doing here? So, and why do, do the institutions you know are important? Because we all know that scholarly communication and, uh, and, uh, and, and open air as a scholarly communication infrastructure, we are very well aware of the processes. So the challenge here is to go from a closed and traditional scholarly communication to an open scholarly communication system. And what does this mean? You know, the, what are the stakes here? Um, uh, uh, the, the transition to an open ecosystem that will support diversity, equity, and inclusion. And these are not just some words, it's, it's something that we need to take in mind because uh, we have big universities, small universities, big labs, small labs, big data, uh, you know, long tail of science of data. So we need to somehow uh, get get this uh, get this uh, on board, and then of course it's the ownership and the cost. So who owns and controls the processes? It's not about the data or the publications, but about the processes. How can we become um, managers on what we do? And what are the costs? Because the costs again are non neg negligible. Uh, so in all of this, so I'm just putting the context and, and uh, we are presenting open air. So open air is a non-profit organization. It's called open air AMCA, which is a non, uh, non-profit civil organization it was established in 2018. We have 15 members from 34 countries. And uh, the, the power that we have is a network of experts, the national open access desks that have been um, in operations from the beginning when we started in back in 2009. And we have services that Julia uh, will be presenting. Uh, th so this is you know, just a few words about us. And then what we would like you to invite is um, uh, to, um, to read our strategy. Uh, you can find it on the web. Uh, we have the strategy for 2023-25, and uh, it shows our commitment to facilitate open science, but by our commitment, it's, it's the members, it's the 50 members, and uh, the, the more members that we are expecting to join open air uh, to commit to open science. And as you will see on the right side of, 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 this, uh, of, of the slide, uh, we have three action lines. One is services, the other is training, and the other is policies. And this is um, embracing this. This is what we are trying to to uh, to present through our services, and um, this is what we will do. And probably we will refine as things are emerging in uh, in in the next years. Julia, so uh, going. So this was just a preamble. I think you know most of you were aware of, of these things about open science. It's just that the message that I want to get through is that this is something that we need to embrace at the institutional level. This is something that we need to embrace in a way that fits uh, our own needs because different institutions have different needs. 
And what we can do in open air is to support you and to work together with you because um, in, in an area of, of this complexity, what we believe is that are only through co-design and co-development we can uh, take this forward. So what we have identified and where we can support you in this is six steps uh, towards open science. First of all is adopting an open science policy. Some of you do have a policy. Some of you need to adjust this policy to the new uh, things that are coming along. Some of you don't have a policy and you know, how can you start uh, making this? This is where uh, through our uh, consulting and, uh, and uh, through the national open access desks and through our training, we can guide you through. Uh, second, you can link your repository, open access journal or CRE systems, you know, through open air and the open air graph to the world. You can publish, you can support your, um, um, uh, your researchers to publish in the open uh, services to do that. You can discover and share uh, with no barriers. So how can you connect your, your things, your, your content with others and how can you let people uh, discover it? Then uh, most importantly for some of the research managers is how to monitor research outcomes, open science policy, up, uh, policy uptake and impact. And this is where you can do it through the open science and the openness of the processes. And last but not least, uh, this is you know, something that is, uh, is all over the place, is how to train students, research and staff to perform open science, you know, in this digital interconnected world, how, you know, what are the most important things? And this is where what we focus on on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, webinar. So now I think I will pass on the baton to Julia. Hi, Julia. Yes, thank you, thank you, Natalia. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. I am the Outreach and Engagement Officer, and I will speak uh, about uh, more focusing on the services. So to increase the visibility and the impact of the research that is produced in uh, your organization, we compile a, a series of uh, services that can uh, support you in uh, um, making uh, your uh, uh, research more findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Uh, so we, as uh, Natalia said, we are co-designing, so we want uh, always your feedback uh, and uh, um, we customize services uh, on base uh, on your needs. The backbone service of OpenAir is called OpenAir Graph. Uh, which is a collection of different entities, meaning uh, um, uh, data from different kinds of data sources, publication, um, ID uh, for uh, authors uh, or institutions that are not uh, just uh, purely a collection of uh, little dots, but they are linked together to produce some data that can be uh, easily accessible and uh, um, manageable from the form that the user can, uh, can do. For instance, for researchers to explore the data and the link or to deposit their own research from uh, the monitor system. So from uh, founders and uh, institution to understand and track uh, what are uh, the policies and uh, several services that I'm going to show you uh, in a few. So OpenAir is a, a systematic uh, structure, is a service of service present in the European Open Science Cloud, EOSC. So the data uh, that are provided and are compliant uh, to the OpenAir uh, uh, guidelines will feed this graph uh, that can be also uh, directly feed by uh, resources from publication, data source, database, um, or other research product, and can be discovered by our service like Explore or Connect, Monitor, and uh, Assessed. So now um, what I'm going to show you is uh, all these services in which kind of phases of the research life cycle they can enter and then how you can support and facilitate the uptake of open science from researchers and the research staff 
during different phases of research. Let's start with the plan. Argos is a software for data management tool that is also one of the services that Science Europe, uh, the, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest coalition of funders is suggesting. And uh, um, we know that the funders have uh, as mandatory request to have a data management plan. Uh, but for the institutional level, what kind of information you can get from it? The data management plan is uh, a template, uh, a form, so we provide a template in which uh, the uh, researchers have to describe uh, where they collect the data, how, so which kind of facilities they are using, what kind of ethics there is behind, what kind of licensing for the use they have, and uh, uh, how much, uh, how many data they are reusing or they uh, plan to uh, create, to develop during a project. So you have all this information that are called the metadata that uh, uh, can be directly provided by the researchers. And this is fundamental because uh, everything will be already transparent and open, and you can get information about uh, um, how much facilities, uh, what, what is the use of facilities that uh, the researchers are doing during uh, uh, their project. What we can provide with Argos is a cloud system in which the researchers can enter uh, in a living document all their uh, data so they can update whenever they want. It's machine actionable, so you don't have uh, uh, to be worried about the interoperability of the system. Otherwise, we can give you a local installation uh, from your organization, so the, the people have just to, to go directly to your website. or. Uh, another option is to have uh, a white library installation for you for Argos, in which you can personalize, uh, you can ask personalized support and training from us. So you get uh, all these uh, uh, possibilities. So you can have uh, your own template, but you can also have uh, the access to the template that uh, are already discussed from funders from our site. So they are already validated. You have a DMP, a data management plan that is already fair. Everything is automatic. Uh, all the contents are enriched because uh, um, they get access to uh, the data that are already present in the research graph. Uh, and you can uh, have a living document and you can track uh, the indicators uh, from uh, the monitor. We have already some uh, uh, interesting case studies that uh, you can check uh, in our website. Let's proceed to the discovering and collect. So I already mentioned Explore, which is the main services to see basically all the library, all the contents that is in uh, provide. But um, what, what else, uh, uh, if I have to uh, search for something specific, I will choose some specific shelf. For instance, if I am interest in philosophy, I will go to the section that is labeled philosophy. So basically, Connect is uh, a search engine uh, that can uh, uh, target a specific gateway. For instance, uh, uh, we can select together some repositories that are of interest for you, the journals of your choice, the data that are specific from funders that are from uh, your institution. Uh, we help by using uh, uh, our artificial intelligence and automatic mechanism that is helping you to find uh, and to collect the uh, data sources that are more of interest for your community. You can have a, a specific for your repository or some for some field, or you can uh, make the most from a university alliances. So we have, uh, for instance, uh, several uh, repositories that are uh, uh, from uh, university alliances uh, together in a network. One of uh, these example uh, is uh, Aurora that uh, you can see here. And uh, the managers will get an admin dashboard 
and uh, uh, which uh, several people can contribute. Uh, you can decide uh, who, uh, mainly repository uh, curator or uh, someone that is more related to digital libraries. And uh, um, you will be part of our community of curators. Uh, and the users on the other side can browse through publication, but not only, also research data, research software, and any kind of research product that is produced or we can find in the collection based on your interest input. You can also find the right place to deposit if the repository are compliant to OpenAir. Uh, and uh, if uh, um, uh, everything is in the node, and uh, you can uh, always link. So these are uh, uh, some case studies. Uh, Utopia and uh, Aurora are uh, two of our research alliance uh, already in Connect. And we have also a specific institute uh, that is called NOMAD, in, in uh, which we have uh, topic related uh, um, entries. Sharing uh, data is the most uh, difficult uh, uh, things for uh, sensitive data, for the worrying of uh, which kind of data are shared. And we have uh, Amnesia as a service provided by the Athena Research Center. This is uh, a software that uh, you can download uh, for statistically guarantees that you cannot link any output from the original data. And this is useful if you want to be compliant with uh, the GDPR guidelines, uh, personalized data and sensitive data. We have uh, a webinar coming soon uh, in which you can uh, go in depth on uh, this uh, service. I will move on to uh, how to create a diamond uh, open access journal. Uh, EpiScience is offered by uh, our partner in France and this is helping you to having an overlay journal on top of open access repositories, for instance, HAL, archives, or um, Zenodum. The research can publish directly the preprint, and through this system, they can also manage an editorial board that can be chosen by um, the people who want to run this journal. Uh, and you can also invite reviewers to uh, give feedback and to provide a peer review to the publication. So you get a um, manuscript that is fully peer reviewed with no cost. And you will have a toy. Uh, it will be harvested by OpenAir, visible on Explore and eventually also in Connect. And uh, everything will be open and free. So this is everything that you can get. It's interesting also that all the metadata that are uh, used uh, from our services will be uh, already linked and indexed in the open air services. So everything is connected. The Nodo is the most popular of our services that is offered by CERN. Uh, because nowadays we don't publish just a manuscript or book, but we also need a place where we can uh, publish data sets and other kind of research product. So you get a DOI, you can be cited, uh, your researchers can be cited and your institution can be mentioned because everything that is shared has to provide the metadata that are based on data site schema, which is the standard way to be fair uh, or to help uh, the researcher to be fair. Um, and it's just a simple form that uh, um, you have to compile, you describe the data, you publish the data in uh, two clicks and you get a DOI that can be cited and exported. So it's easy to use. We have a GitHub integration, so you can also publish uh, softwares and uh, you can create your own communities uh, to collect uh, the research in the same place uh, from, for instance, the same institutes or from the same departments uh, up to your policies. Archive. We have, uh, we have one service 
provide, that is the gateway also for uh, EOSC. Uh, it helps you to expose institutional content to EOSC and to the world in just one stop shop place. It's more than an archive because behind uh, there are several services on, of open air that are helping you to do an automating uh, validation of your metadata uh, that are compliant to uh, the open air guidelines, uh, but also to the fair uh, principle. Um, you can get the information about the downloads of the data, so you can also see on top uh, not only the download of the uh, publication that are fully available but also about the data that are uh, used from your uh, repository and we have also the, du the, du the duplication and curation of uh, the data that uh, you can see in your uh, um, metadata updates notification so we can show you the hidden value of the of your repository in one service you will get a dashboard as uh, admin you can uh, validate your data sources from a literature data crisis system you can have also a fair assessment that at the moment uh, is in, in beta but is uh, uh, about to be released in production uh, you will uh, have a metadata enrichment because all the information that are coming from uh, uh, the uh, uh, open air graph will be part of uh, uh, this uh, uh, dashboard, the content dashboard. You will receive a notification. You can browse on history, you can get uh, a statistic and, uh, um, and everything that is related to how uh, open science is advancing uh, also at the level of your repositories. So now the fun part, how uh, you can track and assess uh, the open science activities inside uh, your institution. We have created a monitor dashboard uh, that is, uh, uh, is uh, customized based on your needs. It can be public if uh, you want to be transparent uh, in the evaluation and assessment and you want to showcase what uh, you are doing. It can be restricted for the internal members uh, who are performing uh, the evaluation or can be private in the moment that we are doing the setup. We have different uh, indicators that we can show you uh, that are uh, uh, the uh, research output so you will have information about the publication data set uh, uh, software um, if uh, uh, your uh, uh, university is producing more uh, um, interdisciplinarity um, work or it's uh, much more specific or expert in some field of science or if uh, some fields of science are more open uh, than others. So you will get this kind of information. You will be also informed about the fairness of uh, your uh, uh, production, the access right, the open access rules, which are the journals that are uh, uh, most preferred by your researchers. Um, how, um, much expenses are you investing in article processing charges for open access journal? Uh, how much uh, uh, compliant uh, you are uh, uh, with the Plan S principles? Then you will have also information about the networking of uh, your um, uh, researchers. So which kind of universities, uh, uh, internal or external, are more collaborating with your institution. You can also um, check the impact uh, with some indicators uh, that we are also still developing. Uh, so we are always on the track uh, of uh, enriching this kind of indicators and everything can be connected to grants and project so you will get all this information in one single dashboard uh, so it's customized uh, we have predefined indicators but you can have also different breakdown uh, everything can be downloaded for uh, any kind of report that you need uh, to do from uh, your institution and uh, of course, you can customize the indicators that uh, should be 
showed or not. We have several institutions that are already part of uh, our dashboard. We have not only uh, universities, but also research institutions and uh, cooperative uh, uh, research organization. So from uh, Czech Republic to Finland, uh, from uh, Italy uh, to international uh, cooperation, uh, Germany, Portugal, uh, we have several possibility to show you and to give you a demo. And finally, uh, Open APC is another uh, services uh, that is helping you to assess uh, the cost of uh, the publication that uh, your researchers are performing. It's offered by the University of Bielefield. Um, you can uh, have uh, a global uh, uh, data sets by measuring your APC cost, but we are not just uh, collecting the cost information. We are also enriching this kind of information with an in-depth analysis and uh, give you also the metadata that are uh, coming from the graph to give you a, a much broader uh, perspective of the cost that uh, you are spending in uh, the article processing charges or uh, book processing charges and so on. At the end, you will have uh, uh, this three map um, visualization that you can download, export. Uh, you can work on this data to analyze, to uh, produce other research on top. And uh, we give you all uh, uh, the ownership, it's, it's yours. Uh, and it's uh, for you just uh, easy to use. Uh, these are all the institutions and universities that are already part of our case studies. You can uh, uh, visit also the three maps in uh, uh, the dedicated uh, website that you can see down my screen. But uh, the services are nothing if uh, there is not uh, the skills or the training for using it. What OpenAir does is uh, that we are, uh, have a network very strong in training to upskill your student and the staff. We also provide uh, several material in uh, forms of uh, guidelines, uh, uh, guides, uh, fact sheets, uh, tutorials, and podcasts that you can visit in our uh, um, YouTube and uh, in our web page. Um, we offer uh, um, direct help with uh, uh, our help desk system. We create bootcamp to train your staff uh, to give uh, training uh, in open science. And we create uh, an open cloud Moodle platform uh, that uh, is hosting a community and co-creating uh, open courses. This is the platform that is already used uh, or chosen by EOSC, so it will be uh, populated by the training uh, directly from uh, EOSC, but uh, you will find also materials from uh, our uh, open science community and the training on uh, research data management plan, because we, we know that uh, um, not all uh, the uh, national and the universities are in the same uh, stage. Um, we offer learning path and badging mechanism, and uh, um, we uh, are giving uh, the possibility of having a long-term access to this up-to-date material. So how we can start our collaboration? You can contact us, express your needs, uh, say what uh, kind of services uh, you were not thinking to develop, but you may need, or uh, uh, you are in, uh, in need, for instance, training. Uh, and we will uh, provide uh, the um, uh, services that are more uh, um, tailor-made for you. Then we make it official, so we write uh, all the parts of uh, our agreement uh, in a personalized one-to-one uh, -one call. And uh, then we will do a public launch, so we will have a dissemination of uh, your activities in open science. The fact that uh, you are really stepping up open science in your uh, universities. 
uh, all the services are coming for free till the end of uh, um, the Open Air Nexus project, which will end uh, in uh, this year. Uh, however, some of these services can have a subscription fee, not all of them. Uh, but this fee can be waived based on the founders' uh, funding uh, opportunities or no profit pricing. Also, all the members that are part of Open Air Inc. or want to be part of Open Air will have uh, a special discount. And uh, um, in any case, our services are uh, for uh, co designing and co developing uh, uh, with uh, your needs. So, if there are uh, already some uh, questions, we can uh, give the floor 